All right, welcome to Talking Investing. I'm Tom, and as always, this is not financial advice. Today, I want to go through the CPI report that came out this morning. That is the inflation report. It's having a big effect on the stock market. It's having a big effect on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies. It also will have an effect on what the Fed does next week with rate hike rises. So this affects everything. So I want to go through this in detail, and we're going to talk all about what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to look at a summary of what this thing's done over the course of the last year. You'll see we peaked in June of 2022 at 9.1%. So this is now the eighth month in a row that CPI data or inflation, if you will, has gone down. So this is a spectacular trend. Now there's expectations set for this. So coming into this morning, the market was expecting the consensus here you'll see was 6%. Well, that's exactly where it came in. So CPI came in, top line CPI came in at 6% and we'll dive into the numbers some more. But right now from a top line basis, we met expectations and I think that was critical. With everything that happened, last week with the banks, the increase in the volatility index, which we'll look at later as well. There was massive fear and panic. The Fed had to meet with the Treasury and the FDIC over the weekend and put out a special press release over the weekend. So there was dramatic, dramatic effects coming into this week. So ordinarily, the CPI data would be the number one thing that affects what the Federal Reserve is going to do at their next rate height meeting, which, by the way, is next week. However, with all of the things that came at us between last Thursday and today, this number was less important. The main thing that I was looking to see is that this number was not a disaster, which would have been a big, big surprise. Nobody was expecting a disaster. So you'll see last month, just to take a look back, the consensus was 6.2 and it came in at 6.4. So we did miss last month and that caused a little bit of a pullback. So the market panicked a little bit. It also started to cause panic and almost instantaneously, the market had priced in a 50 basis point rate hike by the Federal Reserve. So we're going to take a look at those charts as well, because that turned out to be a knee-jerk panic reaction. Everything that's happened subsequent to that has completely erased that possibility. So in that regard, this CPI report was not necessarily as important as previous CPI reports, as long as it wasn't a total nightmare, which it wasn't. In fact, it met expectations by almost all measures. By the way, if you haven't done so, please remember to subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. You can also hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we do a video. Things are happening fast in the market lately, so it's important to stay up to date. Okay, so if we look at the actual press release from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you'll see Consumer Index Summary. The consumer price index for all urban consumers rose 0.4% in February on a seasonally adjusted basis. Okay, so 0.4% is month over month. Our expectation was 0.4% for the the overall CPI, so that came in rate as expected. Over the last 12 months, all the item index increased 6.0% before seasonal adjustments. Also, that was exactly as expected. So, so far, everything is just right on. The index for shelter was the largest contributor to the monthly all items increase, accounting for over 70% of the increase. So you can see right now, that is the stubborn piece of this puzzle. So shelter is by far far the biggest thing that is holding this number up. The index for all items less food and energy, so that's core inflation, that was up 0.5% month over month. This was the one miss that we got. We were expecting this to come in at 0.4, so this came in at 0.5, so that was a little worse than expected, but very, very close. And again, this is the only number that missed out of all of the numbers. The all items index increased 6% for the 12 months ended February. This was the smallest 12 month increase since the period ended September of 2021, so that was a year and a half ago. So these numbers are starting to look a lot healthier. We are not where the Fed wants to be from a target standpoint. They continue to talk about 2%. However, we are down from 9.1% down to 6% over the course of eight straight months of getting a better number. The all items less food and energy index, which is the core index, rose 5.5% over the last 12 months. That also came in as expected. So just to take a quick deeper look, I don't want to go too deeply into these. This top line is all items. So that's the entire CPI number. That's 6.0. We talked about that. So that came in rate as expected. This was 0.4. That was February month over month. That came in right as expected. You'll see there's starting to be a few negative numbers. Overall energy was minus 0.6%. The biggest piece of that was fuel oil was down 7.9%. Energy services was down 1.7%. And utilities piped gas services was down 8%. So 
That was a big part of the decrease this month. You'll see the other category that continues to decrease after being a big part of the inflation numbers over the previous year, used cars and trucks was down 2.8%. That is at least six months in a row that that number has gone down. And that number had skyrocketed in 2021 and early 2022. The last item that was in the negative was medical care services down 0.7%, so I'm not sure exactly why that is. Then if you look at the rest of the whole list, there is no large number to the upside, so no giant surprise to the upside at all here. All in all, this report came in as expected, but the most important thing was we just needed to avoid a disaster on this one because the other things that have happened over the course of the last week, most specifically the shakeup in a few of these large banks, and then yesterday, all of the regional banks were collapsing from a stock standpoint. So today, with these numbers, the regional bank stock prices are way up. Consumers are feeling a lot more comfortable today than they were even just two days ago. So it's a pretty dramatic turnaround. I want to take a look at what this did to the markets. And then I want to talk about what this did to the Fed, because they are going to have an interest rate meeting next week. By the way, you can join the channel and support the channel by becoming a member. You can hit the join button on the YouTube page. It's right next to the subscribe button. Members have a bunch of privileges. There's a lot of extra content. There's also private live streams and a private discord. Lastly, it helps support the channel. So I appreciate everybody's support. Special thanks to all the members. Okay, now let's talk rate hike increase because we've gone through a massive roller coaster of emotions on this one. Jerome Powell made a statement about a week and a half ago that led the market to believe that potentially he was going to be raising heights at a faster pace. Mainly that's because he said he may be raising rates at a faster pace. So the market interpreted that to think that potentially that greatly increased the, the chances of a 50 basis point rate hike in this meeting on March 22nd, which is next Wednesday. So if you look in the chart down below here, you'll see one week ago, the market had priced in a 70% probability of a 50 basis point rate hike. You'll see that now, one week later, the market is pricing in a 0.0% chance of that happening. So that is a dramatic, dramatic shift in one week. And this has everything to do with the fact that the raising interest rates was one of the underlying causes for why we started to have some bank failures. It was when Jerome Powell said he was gonna increase the speed of rate hikes that caused this panic in the regional banking sector and particularly some of the crypto-friendly banks. This 70% chance of a 50 basis basis point hike is now a 0.0% chance as of today. I don't expect that to change. I think there is no chance of that happening. To be fair, I have been saying all along, I did not think there was any chance of a 50 basis point rate hike. Even though Jerome Powell did make that one statement, he has been unbelievably crystal clear. I thought it would have been a gigantic departure from his overall plan. And quite frankly, I think it would have been a huge mistake. It is mostly priced in that we will have a 25 basis point rate hike. I believe that's what will happen. I will be very surprised if anything other than that happens. So again, I have been saying that all along. I'm sticking to my gums. I think it's 25 basis points is the most likely scenario. And that's what I think that they should do right now. However, you'll see the market has now even even gone past that. They've now priced in almost a 14% chance that the rate hike is zero. So that was unthinkable. That percentage has been at zero for the last year. So this is the first time basically in the last year there's any chance priced in built into the futures that the Fed is not gonna raise rates at all. Now, I think that's highly unlikely. Right now they need to keep doing what they're doing. In addition to the fact that it's the right thing to do, I think the main reason for that is if they depart from what they're doing, it's gonna create uncertainty and the market does not need uncertainty right now. You can see what happened when they alluded to the fact that they may be raising rates at a faster pace. The market essentially collapsed. We had two of the three largest bank failures in the history of the United States and the wheels were coming off to the point where the Fed, the FDIC, and the Treasury Department all had to have a special meeting over the weekend and make policy change on a Sunday evening. So that brings me to the volatility index. This is the volatility index or the VIX on a one week time frame. So what I wanted to show you was you'll see Last week, including into Friday, the volatility index had a gigantic green candle. Now, in this instance, this is the one place you don't want a green candle. That means volatility is increasing greatly. You can see I have a blue line at around 35. When, when volatility gets up to about 35, that's when the market is panicking. So you can see we were moving in that direction. The events the Treasury Department took over the weekend and the Fed to back up these banks that are failing 
In essence, what they did was they said they're gonna support all the depositors. So all depositors will be made whole. That really dialed back the fear factor. This week, we are now red. So we're back down to 22, which is a fairly healthy number. This line holds pretty much all the way back to February of 2020. So that is now three years ago. So we're somewhere in the low to middle range of this. This is settling down. I think this is gonna continue to settle down. This is one of the main reasons we're having a big update today. So the fact that 50 basis basis points is off the table. The volatility index is down. All of the companies that had money in Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, which are now out of business, all of those depositors have been guaranteed access to their money and not just access to their money, they're gonna get 100% of their money back and they had immediate access to their money Monday morning. So that was absolutely crucial. To take a look at the cryptocurrency world, I just wanna look at the Bitcoin chart for just a minute because this has also had a massive, massive effect on Bitcoin. Bitcoin had broken a level to the downside it was looked like it was trending downward. We were in about a two and a half week trend to the downside. As all this happened with the Federal Reserve coming in and stepping in and backstopping the banks, we saw an immediate turnaround in cryptocurrency. Bitcoin from last Friday until right now here in the middle of the day trading is up 33%. That is a monster run. It has also broken an eight month line of resistance. So Bitcoin is off to the races. The cryptocurrency world is following behind. Bitcoin is leading right now. So I'm expecting to see this hold as well. So we will see. Did, can the momentum hold for the rest of the week? This was a big hurdle to get over. The next big thing is the Fed rate hike, which I think is almost certainly locked in at 25 basis points. So I don't think we're gonna get any surprise there at all. If there is a surprise, it will be to the downside. Again, I think that's unbelievably unlikely, but 50 basis points is off the table. There's 0% chance of that happening built into the futures. So it looks to me like we have the potential for a little bit of smooth sailing for a few weeks here and potentially for the market Market, both the equities and cryptocurrency to go on a nice run. Obviously, I'll continue to check in on this and see if anything changes. The way the market's going this year and the way this last year and a half has gone, things could change at any time. So of course, as always, this is not financial advice. Please be very careful while investing. And if you have not done so yet, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next video.